let me take you back to uh, your earlier life. Um, who, what kind of figures in your life were influences on you? You mentioned Charles Houston a couple of times and Thurgood Marshall a couple of times, but even before that, what about school teachers? Uh, what figures in your life helped to shape and develop you? Well, my shape and development came from two women. Mm -hmm. More than of course, now, as I told you, but I didn't, as we discussed earlier, but my father well, had, had deserted us, and uh, my mother left me with my great grandmother, and she went up to Hot Springs to the Homestead Hotel to work, dipping water for guests. And uh, so I didn't really have too much of a recollection before about four years old. But anyway, but when, my, when I was six, my grandmother, who had been living up in Scranton, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, died while well, she was uh, very sick. She came to, back to Richmond and shortly thereafter died. And uh, of course, that's the first time my mother, that I recognized her. Uh, and uh, her, she, she had divorced my father and, by, and, and married again by that time. And uh, instead of her, uh, her husband, Joseph Hill, came to Richmond for the funeral. And they carried me back to Roanoke with them when they left. And so I left Richmond when I was six and went to Roanoke. Now, uh, that's living with my parents. That's the first time I really ever had any family situation because my great grandmother and great aunt that was living with, I don't, I don't remember too much about any home activities because they, they were domestics. And they, the domestics in those days weren't making any money. And so they spent all the time working and they come home in the evening. And so far as I can remember, there wasn't there too much of an activity. I don't remember ever seeing a newspaper or magazine. Anything like that until I went to Roanoke. But that, that changed when you went to Roanoke? But when I went to Roanoke, we, we shared home, a house with a family in Pentecost, Bradford and Lydia Pentecost. Mr. Pentecost was a chef cook on the North and Western Railroad. He had been recruited by the North and Western to come to improve their dining car service. So he, he, was, he was upper middle class, so it was economics was concerned. And, uh, and he would gather up all the papers. He gather up you know, a lot of papers on, on off trains on Sunday, and and uh, when he was out on a Sunday, and so he took a great interest. And he we used to read he read papers to me. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting ahead of my story. But for two years, I lived with my mother and my stepfather, and in the same house with the Pentecostals. The Pentecostals decided to buy a home 400, and this was 39 Gilmer Avenue. They bought a, a house 401 Gilmer Avenue and were renovate, renovating it that summer. Now, Virginia went dry that summer, and uh, my, my stepfather was operating the pool room at that time. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, by the time I was eight years old, he had decided to build a stool and, was, and began to teach me how to shoot billiards and pool. And so if, if Virginia hadn't gone dry, maybe I might have been Virginia, Virginia Fats. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, that killed the neighborhood where his pool room was. And uh, so he decided to go back to Homestead to work. And my mother was going to stay here in, in Richmond to, to go to school. But uh, I was so comfortable with the, with the Pentecostals, we'd go up and Look at the renovations taking place, and I assumed we, you know, we were living, living together 39. I assumed we were all going to live up there. I didn't know anything about what, what was happening so far as the state was concerned. And uh, I was just eight years old at that time. And so, since I was so comfortable, my mother decided she'd go on to Homestead and two and work and, and let me stay with the Pentecostals. So for from the time I was eight, until I was 15, I did the Pentecostal. And 
Mrs. Pentecost was a very person of great personal esteem. And you know, back in those days, you had a lot of people with uh, with uh, traveling salesmen. You know, they used to sell everything, come to your house, you know. And uh, but they, what they would do in Negro neighborhoods, they would uh, find out the name of people in the next door. They come in when they came to our house. So if they ask for Lydia, they leave here for you. Close the door in the face. They, so they soon learned that if they wanted to sell anything at the Pentecost house, they had to come and ask for Mrs. Pentecost. And, and also, when they come in the house, they had to take off their hats and, and show their wares like they would anybody else. Anybody else. And so, uh, as I say, I was known as the Pentecost kid. And, and uh, I was taught to have good personal esteem and not low, low ego. Mm, now, you said another woman, two yeah. women influenced you, Mrs. Pentecost and who else? My mother. Your mother. Yeah, when I, when I went to live with, actually lived with my parents in Washington. See, I left Rome after the eighth grade. You had me go to schools. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the class ahead of me was, was, was a small class, about 10, 10 pupils. They tried to get my Miss Pentecost to let me skip the third grade and go to that class. But she, she thought she ought to take every class as you go along. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the class I was in, it was about 30, 30 kids. Well, <laughs> The teacher couldn't give too much attention to any one kid, and then I, I was one of these devilish kids, uh, always talking or, or, or thinking of something. And it was another boy in the class, a little older than I was, who was a street wise and street smarts. And uh, I kind of looked up to him, named Piggy Wilson. His name was Charlie Wilson, but he got, we called him Piggy. And uh, I looked up to Piggy. And between Piggy and me, we, we uh, always could think of what I dealt with. For example, uh, I remember by the time we got to about the fifth grade or sixth grade or something, I had a suit that had been cut down, the main coat, you know, mm -hmm. and with the little, little watch pocket, a little chain pocket, you know, inside the, inside the coat. Right. Mm -hmm. I had cut one of those little crickets, and uh, I'd put it in there. And I press it, and of course, it is determined that the sound came from my direction. But by the time it got to me, I pulled all my pockets out, mm -hmm. everything, you know, and hold my hands up. And the teacher pat me all down, couldn't find anything. <laughs> and she never occurred to her. But just little watch pockets, you see? I mean, little change pocket. And uh, that's all that kind of dealt with. I mean, just a knowing that's all. I mean, yeah, I got my lessons, but uh, the, other, the other thing about it, this big class, it was a big class, but they had a false sense of, of loyalty too. Nobody ever squealed on anybody about doing anything. And uh, so, so uh, uh, as a consequence, we were sent from Gainesburg School in the Northwest down to school down in the Northeast under a woman named Sarah Brown. Well, Miss Brown, uh, Miss Brown, uh, was a good teacher. We all liked her, and she, she did very well with us. But she still couldn't catch it with me with my cricket. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, for Charlie, in the meantime, that was during the period when Rudolph Valentino it was uh, 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 big star in the movies. The Sheik. And uh, she, yeah, we, we, we in the sixth or seventh grade, I remember particularly, we, we used to wear a sash around our base and, and think think we were sheiks. <laughs>